who are the winners and the losers from this deal? Sure. Besides the shareholders are obviously a winner. <laughs> so, you know, ex- you know, we talked we talked a little bit about already of obviously of for JB what their uh strategic vision was for this. So, excluding them, um it, it did ha- still have a pretty surprising effect. So, going back to who we mentioned earlier, we have Coca-Cola, right? So Coca-Cola made, a, uh, I think, a series of two investments where they're buying up a stake and partnering with Keurig on the Keurig Cold, that which happens to serve, you know, very famous. You can make Coca-Cola with it, right, at home. That was a what they thought would be a big selling point for the system, and uh, Coca-Cola had amassed, uh, I think, a 16, 17 percent stake in Keurig. Yeah, they had uh, paid 1.25 billion for 10 percent, and then that. Started that huge run up, and then they paid um, way more, like a way higher price for the other six, seven percent. Yes, and their dollar cost averaging is about, I think, ninety bucks, and they're making two dollars yes. a share. So that you know, that's what uh, you know that I calculated out as well. So you know, their own almost twenty six million shares, which is really funny when you think about it like this way. On Friday, they were worth one point three four billion dollars. On Monday, they were worth two point three eight billion dollars due to that. Unbelievable. To do that trading activity, so you know their cost basis around ninety ninety one dollars. You know they went from being underwater almost a billion dollars to now being very slightly about, about twenty six million dollars. You know in the black on this investment. And the thing is, uh, Coca Cola CEO Mutar Kent has mentioned that you know they they look forward to continue collaborating with JB. Um, I'm sure on the cold and other technology and devices and offerings. So. Um, it just seems like an op- an even bigger opportunity now potentially for Coca Cola, where it's like, okay, let's leverage this not just in the U.S. Cool. So, I almost wonder if Coca Cola will get cash to the wayside or something because JB clearly doesn't care about soda, and the cold hasn't gotten the greatest reception. But oh well. The I think part of their view just might be a little bit longer term in that okay, you know, the cold came out. Not that long ago, a couple months ago, it'll take some time to one like get those efficiencies to bring the price down honestly to a more reasonable point. Yeah. Right? It was because before it was offered at three hundred dollars. A lot of people were kind of scoffing at that initial price, but that will come down. The pod prices will honestly likely come down as well to a point where it sustains a better user yeah. base, like that twenty million that they currently have for the hot brewers. And other than Coca Cola too, there you know some other investors that. Got quite a bit of surprise for some of the the short sellers. So, interestingly enough, um, you know, for Keurig, their short interest increased from 5.7 million shares at the beginning of 2015 to between 15 and 16 million shares oh, man. in October and November. So that represents about 10 percent of Keurig's total shares outstanding. When for the S and P 500 overall, the high, the median short interest, or something that would be considered high. Is around two percent. So the fact that it was at ten percent just shows you how bearish, um, yeah. you know, some of the activity, the trading activity had become. And uh, in particular, you know, David Einhorn at Greenlight Greenlight Capital was one of the more well-known vocal investors shorting uh, this company. You know, he had a position in 2011 that he closed out in 2014, and he basically said, "All right, well, that was a pretty unsuccessful shorting experiment on our part." And then he he doubled down this year. And you know the price collapse this year that like we talked about is down sixty percent year to date. Mm. Did really well for him. I think it was like his third best play in his portfolio. Only to have this happen. So he's still making money on the deal. I think his he sure, it, like it was like a hundred hundred two dollars yeah. something like that. But he just lost a huge huge game. This otherwise. just speaks to how hard it is to short because technically those people weren't wrong. Keurig was not doing well. <laughs> well, t- t- really, twice he he kind of had the right idea, but you know he couldn't live out. He he basically couldn't survive through the position long enough to gain. Right. And there was a, a previous dip before this current one in those shares, but he just got very unlucky with with the boost now. 